Thank you so much for joining us today, uh, second day, g s e p 2021 Global Social Economic Forum. Yay, we are all ladies. I, I think if a, a male participant appears, we'll be happy to ask, I don't know, like particularly the question to him. Anyway, thank you so much for being today with us. This is an amazing session. I think the topic of learning for social innovation and transformation is uh, what all of us are interested. So this is great to have all six presentations, seven speakers today. Thank you so much. Let me just introduce you. Uh, our moderator, Valentina Verze. She is now uh, at the co uh, working at the cooperatives unit in the enterprise department of international labor organization in, in Geneva. She was working as project manager and country representative and also project manager. And uh, she has degrees in uh, economics and business, social economy, economics and management of cooperative firms and nonprofit organizations. Thank you so much for being with us today. And, and Valentina, the floor is yours. Thank you so much. Thank you, Yun. Thank you so much. And uh, good morning and good afternoon, everyone. So I'm uh, truly glad to be with you all today uh, as five days dialogues among different stakeholders from several countries and uh, continents discussing social and solidarity economy as tool to advance more sustainable and inclusive societies. Uh, the today's session, as Yun was mentioning, would be focusing on learning for social innovation and transformation. And is part of uh, the second day of g s e p 2021, Forum dealing with education, learning, and research for social and solidarity economy. Education is a key factor in the construction of new society that allow the reduction of inequalities and finding innovative solutions to today's problems and challenges. It is essential for any cultural and social change. And education is more and more understood as a lifelong process. which encompasses formal and informal learning from early childhood and basic education throughout advanced learning opportunities and paths. Lifelong learning involves more than the skills needed to work. Actually, it is especially about developing the capabilities needed to participate in democratic societies. It offers a pathway to inclusion in labor markets for youth and the unemployed. And it also has a transformative potential. In fact, investment in learning at an early age facilitates learning at a later stage in life and are proved to be linked with a higher level of social mobility among generations and also expanding the choices of future generations. But in terms of social and solidarity economy and education, where do we stand? Why is it even important to speak about social and solidarity economy in educational systems, both formal and informal, and both with specific curricula and with as mainstream subjects, no? or more general ones? So I think that the ongoing problems, the growing inequalities, lack of decent work, and environmental challenges, just to name a few, existed way before the current crisis and are now exacerbated by the impact of the pandemic on societies. And we, we know that it is also uneven in the way it is impacting people. So a number of governments and organizations are calling for the promotion of, the, of a new paradigm of production and consumption of sustainable and inclusive development and people and planet-centered future work. There is a need of more enterprises and organizations that pursue social objectives, practicing form of democratic governance and encouraging stakeholders' participation with attention to the community in which they operate and factoring in the environment. Uh, this is like the base of plural economic systems. So education and all of these is key in order to create awareness and knowledge around this new way uh, of economy and uh, thinking together to find some common solutions. So what are the main actions and strategies that different actors can put in place in different countries and local territories in order to advance social and solidarity economy principles and values in school, 
entrepreneurship programs, vocational trainings, and also informal learning paths. This is the key questions that we will try to tackle and answer today, thanks to the experience and the insights of our panelists. So I would say that without any further ado, um, we should start the discussion with the panel since we have a rich, a quite rich and different expertise from Morocco, Croatia, Republic of Korea, and Europe. I have certain colleagues working in UK and Spain, but beyond. So uh, it's, a, as uh, Yun was saying, is a quite mission impossible since we have uh, six presentations and eight speakers, but I'm confident we can you know, manage together and uh, be cautious about the time. Each panelist will have eight, 10 minutes for their presentation. And at the end of the day of the, the session, we hope to have a Q&A session. So I don't know if Roman already uh, is with us. Otherwise, I propose to start with our uh, first speaker, Miss um, Davorka Vidovic. Good morning. And she's an assistant professor at the Faculty of Political Science of the University of Zagreb in Croatia. And Miss Vidovic will speak about action research as a participatory and community based model for learning for social innovation. The floor is yours. Thank you. Uh, just a, a quick check. Do you all hear me well? Perfectly. Okay, thank you. So as uh, Valentina, thank you very much for the introduction. Um, uh, as she already mentioned, I work at the Faculty of Political Science and I want to share with you my experience with, um, um, with a new course that I uh, created last year. Uh, so we have just one, one year of experience uh, of, of that course. Uh, it's about sustainable development and social innovation. And I introduced an action, uh, action research as a model to, for interactive uh, learning on that course. So what is uh, action research? Uh, for those who are not familiar with that, it, it's a research method, but not the rigid one. So maybe it's not that, that much used. It doesn't belong to those uh, common uh, basic uh, research methods uh, usually teach uh, in social science research methodology. So action research is something very participative, democratic, and uh, it combines action and research in, in terms that it is research, it, it, um, uh, con it is conducted to, to, to gain some information, to gain some data and knowledge, but it is not conducted on people, but together with people. And action is here uh, because this research um, uh, gathers some knowledge, some, some data, but that knowledge is used to, uh, to make a change. So it's, uh, it's um, to create some action that will uh, transform uh, a community or a process or a situation in a, in a uh, most uh, improve, in, for improvement. Uh, uh -huh. I'm sorry. Um, so, uh, the purpose of action, as I said, is very transformative. And Valentina mentioned transformation as a, one of the key elements of uh, learning for social innovation. That, that's why we are talking about, because we want something to be changed. And uh, action research, in my opinion, for social sciences is quite a uh, useful tool uh, that um, can um, uh, use the, the, the knowledge uh, from, uh, from the community and to um, together with other stakeholders, uh, create um, uh, practice that is different from the practice or from behavior uh, done before. Uh, in that way, it's very uh, trans transformative, uh, both for individual who participates in this process and, and for the community, because it brings something different. It uh, gather a knowledge from the community and uh, together with other participants create uh, a solution to, to, to uh, improve current situation, to improve current practice. In that sense, it's very um, uh, in focus is so social justice. But it always, uh, um, as we will see in the next slide, it always includes, uh, I have problems changing the slide. It always uh, includes um, community. Uh, it, 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 that's the framework for action research. So it's always about community, no matter how we define that community. It can be defined by territory, by functionality, by identity, and so on. Uh, but it always 
uh, think about uh, all elements in community. So it's very much inclusive for those marginalized groups, for those excluded groups that are usually uh, not in the power to, um, to, to give their voice or to participate in decision making. So in that sense, action research uh, uh, think about community and all stakeholders or actors who consist that community and want, wants to reach them and to, to hear from them, um, to, to hear from their experience and to uh, include them in participation uh, about creation, the new, new solution or new um, practice for a specific problem. Um, so that is where the actual, actual social innovation happens. It happens in community. It doesn't happen uh, uh, often in, in individual level and it doesn't happen often at national or a higher level of um, organization of society because in community is, um, it's like think globally or act locally. That's the locality where uh, change can occur actually, that where practical things can, can happen. Uh, so um, it also, um, uh, uh, action research is based on the idea that uh, all we all, all we need to know is already con already uh, uh, consisted in in that certain community. So community uh, has the knowledge of what would be better for for them, what would what practice would uh, would be uh, um, would improve life, uh, would, would include others that are not included, and so on. Uh, the basic principle of action research is participation uh, and democratic um, democratic participation. So it, it, it is a group activity, it's a collective activity. It, uh, it includes a uh, uh, different part, uh, the, all actors of uh, one community. And uh, it is based on um, equal participation of all members. Uh, they, they are... Uh, they are to be seen, they are to be heard in, in those process of action research. So uh, it is particularly import important for those marginalized uh, in less deprived uh, parts of community or part of the society. So the, uh, the um, role of the researcher is very facilita facilitatory and it is there to ask, to summarize, to, to, to lead the process. Uh, so action research in practice uh, uh, may use, it's very, as you can see, uh, it's very uh, some quantitative, you can do a survey, uh, like you can ask questions um, in, in, in form of questionnaires, but um, uh, often it is about interviews, focus groups, participatory observation and different types of collecting data. So uh, shortly, what, uh, what I've done with my students uh, last year, so it was, as I said, the first year of this course, uh, and it was uh, like, um, um, it, it was not obligatory course, uh, so 36 students applied for that. So uh, they were divided in small groups, uh, three students per, per project, and they were, uh, and we used a sustainable development goals, SDGs, as a framework for, for this uh, practice practical uh, work. So they have whole semester to, um, to work on their action research projects, uh, starting from defining a problem. So they, they need to, to, to recognize what is problem in, in terms of um, uh, social needs or uh, un, um, unaddressed social needs and, or ecological needs. Uh, and they, they, need to, uh, they need to identify community. So who is involved? Who uh, is uh, all uh, uh, all parts of the community who um, uh, have some interest or who who have some concerns about the situation, um, and then they start the process of collecting data, talking with the parts of community, uh, and agree of uh, getting some consensus uh, or agreement about the improvement that would be beneficial for the community. Um, then they set some hypotheses uh, about what would be uh, the best way how to improve the situation, set an action plan, and then implement a first step of an action plan, then reflect on that. So the process of action research is very uh, like a spiral. So you are collecting data, then you are uh, trying, uh, uh, applying some innovation, and then you, you are um, then reflecting on that steps and uh, making some changes uh, on your way. So um, last year we have uh, a 12 project, but the, the, these are some examples that I wanted to show you how many different things uh, students decided to um, uh, address uh, through action research. These 
this uh, small picture is uh, one product of one uh, one researcher and students uh, wanted to create a map of uh, zero waste uh, sources uh, that students can be used, but also other things. Uh, one group introduce, uh, start to introduce vegetarians or plant-based manis in students' canteens. Uh, the others uh, inst install uh, plastic plugs, uh, recycling boxes in students' dorms, and so on. Uh, one group, very successful project, they developed a QR code that uh, was used for reporting uh, waste problems in, in their communities and so on. So I don't, I don't know how many minutes I have, so I'm just uh, going fast. We can uh, reflect on this later. Uh, so some insights after the first year. Uh, for, for students, uh, it was quite challenging to, to recognize the community. So mostly they uh, choose uh, students or youth as a community, so dormitory or faculty related. Most common topics are food, energy, waste, responsible con consumption, mostly related to fashion or slow fashion. Uh, they were very, uh, um, uh, in an evaluation report, they said that they are very uh, uh, happy with uh, uh, working in team and uh, with uh, practical problems and practical uh, uh, creative uh, work in, in crea creating solutions. And uh, also, which is very, very important, they had a, a sense, they um, developed a sense for a community. So the problems they are uh, perceiving it has, uh, in, include other people. So they, that's something that they don't uh, necessarily uh, had with them. And uh, in the end, uh, what was uh, quite challenging, challenging for them is the participatory nature of uh, action research because it was difficult for them to, um, to find and to identify all members of the communities um, uh, and to approach to them. But they, are very, but they did some very huge steps uh, uh, communicating with some uh, government representatives or manager of the dormitories uh, and uh, already uh, uh, make them uh, participate in that process. Uh, so, thank you for your attention. This was a short um, uh, example of how we can use uh, different models in teaching and learning about social innovation. Thank you. No, thank you so much, uh, uh, Vidovic. Uh, really interesting also to hear about this experience. I found, you know, especially I believe in our days to let research communicate, you know, with the community and also make sure that all the data, the rich, uh, you know, the rich amount of uh, information, knowledge that we have is at use and at the same time it's feed, fed by the community and uh, the students and also you know how formal uh, system at such a university can really activate students as a social agent for for transformation and change and uh, the it also what uh, really captured my attention was the local dimension now you know university uh, is an institution really that is part of the community and the actors that uh, know uh, in uh, the city and uh, the, the community where it's located. So thank you for sharing this. I believe that uh, uh, I think that other um, uh, panelists will also come back to this uh, participatory approach and community. Speakers will um, give us an example of uh, communication and the creation of network uh, among different universities and we go now to Republic. And uh, so let me introduce uh, uh, the second speaker, uh, Yumi Kim, Professor Kim, uh, at Sanji University in the Republic of Korea. And uh, Ms. Kim will present the case of the program of leading universities economy education in the Republic, uh, Republic of Korea. So please, I give you the floor. Uh, thank you, Valentina, and I want to directly start my uh, presentation. Uh, yeah, now perfectly, perfectly. Yeah. Okay, yeah. and I'm Hyungmi Kim at the Sangji University. Uh, I will give a presentation about SSE partner education partnership of university and government of South Korea. 
the program on leading universities for social economy education. Hereafter, I will call it LUSSE, L-U-S-S-E. In this presentation, I will show the features of curriculums and actual experience in Sangji University. Uh, sorry. Uh, first, let's look at the LUCI. It is one of partnership between government and universities in fostering collaboration between industry and uh, universities. It started in uh, 2013 as a one-year non-degree course with a budget of $3 million, which now increased to $4.2 million. Ministry of Employment and Labor is funding the program, Korea Social Enterprise Promotion Agency, uh, the national level intermediary and selected universities run the course. Uh, someone might ask why the public has to support SSE education. Currently, as SSE is rapidly developing in Korea, but education for SSE is lacking in higher education. As social economy took a different view from conventional economics and management, which assume homo economicus or agency theory, we need different contents and approach in education. In addition, SSE leaders and managers need management competency and practice the social nature of SSE at the same time in conducting social economy activities. In this sense, public involvement in SSE education will be a catalyst in not only uh, advancing SSE education, but outkit tools for leaders uh, in SSE field. Uh, during last seven years, a total of 31 universities provided courses on SSE and almost 2,000 persons showed interested in the course. More than 10,000 people successfully completed the course, and among those, more than 250 attendees carried out internships in dollars were used, and universities also contributed to the project as well. Uh, <laughs> Thanks to the LUCI, we expand SSE education in university and opened over 30 SSE courses, including graduate schools and well-designed lifelong education about SSE. And during the process, universities got more involved in social innovation and uh, SSE. We have tangible outputs as well. Uh, first, we built a vast pool of SSE education contents and syllabus and SSE lecturer database. Moreover, we now knew and listed SSE enterprises that could provide internship and training for younger generation. This output is particularly useful for the future Uh, LUCI curriculums has characteristic features uh, compared to conventional class in universities. It focused on adding, incorporating practices and field exercises in the curriculum. Attendees learn put into practice the theories in workshops, field trips, internships in the, in the actual field and it cared for the after-course process in diverse ways. First, 
uh, attendees build online and offline networks which could develop into a community of uh, practices. Second, opportunities for long-term internship and access to social financing and a place for SSC activities were provided to the attendees. In short, Lucy support to increase attendees' involvement in the SSE after the course completion. Okay. Now let's talk about Lucy experience in Samji University. This picture shows attendees' field visit a part of curriculum in this summer. Before you explain Samji University and Wonju City. Wonju City with uh, 350,000 population has a strong cooperative tradition and Samji University also contributed to the local community in various ways. Based on this tradition, Samji University joined Lucy of 56 persons from uh, 11 municipals attended the course. The course was mixed to remote learning and four team seminars, which were held face to face with a focus on small business, community care, jobs for young people, and SS in rural areas. Uh, in Sangji University, Lucy curriculum was designed to learn and increase capacity building of social entrepreneurs. It trained, it trained and coached attendees so they could gain competency in problem solving, SSC management, and collaboration with others. In particular, by incorporating learning by doing picture in the curriculum. Attendees not practice the knowledge in the actual field in team seminars. It is an important feature of Lucy curriculum in Sangji University. The course construction is different from conventional class. We emphasize the role of uh, coaching in the course. Besides the learners and lecturers, there are, uh, there are two types of coaches. Assistant coach is uh, supporting the learner and team coach to co-facilitate works in the process. In addition, colleague networking uh, This is the snapshot of practices, remote learning, team seminars, and discussions in a seminar, and a field trip to SS Enterprise enterprises in Chuncheon City, Gangwon Province. Yeah, finally, uh, I would like to address the challenges of Lucy. Lucy program, uh, program is certainly encouraging for our SSC education in universities, but we uh, need to go further. First, Lucy curriculums and experience are not fully shared among participating universities. Best practice and will be a good start uh, for open exchange among universities. Second, uh, wider platform building in higher education is in need to facilitate the SS in education development. Uh, third, public organization and government and universities develop Lucy procedures and models. A collaborative governance is in need and every stakeholder has to be active in the process. Lastly, we find that there is quite an urban rural gap in SSE learning, such as a customized camp type program contribute to ease the gaps and add vital vitality in the rural community. So this is the end of my presentation about Lucy and Samji University's experience. Thank you. Thank you so much. And also to be so disciplined, uh, both of you and tonight about time. 
No, I found this very, you know, interesting, especially because, uh, you know, the, what uh, really uh, struck my attention was the uh, university, the support for government, and, you know, a kind of pioneer experience. Uh, actually, I just want to share that uh, social and solidarity economy, ILO is currently, you know, chairing it and also dealing with the, um, uh, coordinating the technical secretariat. Uh, we are currently conducting a mapping exercise on the available trainings and curricula proposed by a variety of institutions around the world. Uh, and are observing a positive trend no, in terms of available uh, training, curricula, uh, specifically tackling but at the same time, um, in many, many countries, uh, it doesn't even exist in, uh, you know, different formal education, but also, uh, you know, uh, informal ones and also um, uh, is, is absent, you know, in, um, uh, in the trainings and, um, um, yeah. Politician, economists go out from university, for instance, without even having heard about a cooperative model, no, for instance, or uh, a legal type, or how we can think about social entrepreneurship in a more collective way. So it, it really partnership um, with government and networks of university in the Republic of Korea, it was possible to pilot such uh, such a program. It. And um, we now move instead to um, another uh, exciting case uh, at school level. So um, our fourth speakers uh, are actually two. So Ms. Maribel Dutari, Director of Operation at Social Enterprise International, and Ms. Jen, Social Enterprise International, the same organization. And they will share uh, with us their work at their organization and at the same time present the case of the school program for ethical enterprise education in the United Kingdom and also other countries, I believe. So the floor is yours. Thank you very much. Um, can you hear us well? All good? Perfect. Thank you very much. Presentation. We're going to try to be very quick, actually, uh, hopefully less than 10 minutes. We'll do a very short uh, introduction of uh, SCI, uh, who we are. Uh, we'll talk about social innovation education, and we'll talk about SPEED, which is the project that you just mentioned. Um, right. So social innovation education, uh, it's a social enterprise that have been um, talking about social enterprise movement since about 30 years. Um, we basically have aimed to transform businesses and schools and communities to create a sort of different way to do, um, to, to do business, to, do, to, to have uh, social enterprises work uh, by, by thinking the new concepts of how ownership and wealth should be shared. Uh, we also have a holistic and innovative approach to transformative uh, nature enterprise and special education. And that's exactly what we will be focusing today. And we're putting this uh, in practice through the, some of the projects that we have on, on, on the pipeline and speed is especially one of them. Uh, so now I will pass the floor to my colleague, Ben, uh, who will be talking about social innovation education. Thanks, Radia Vel. So, yeah, my name's Jen Wall, and I worked on the Horizon 2020 bid that created uh, the educational model of social innovation education uh, through a project called Nemesis. And Uh, talk about this at more of a university and research level um, because this, the, the model we've developed, is for primary and secondary education. So I think it would prepare people well for doing this at university level. Um, so what is it exactly? Um, it fosters an attitude and drive in young people that encourages them to co-create with a diverse range of people. So adults from the community, social innovators, social entrepreneurs, parents, anyone who's interested. And they create locally, reduce inequality and make society 
fairer and more inclusive. And how they do this is through collective action where they identify and carry out social innovation action projects in co-creation labs, which I'll explain a bit more about in a moment, with adults to address these issues. Co-creation labs then, it's any space, it's an open environment, it can be anywhere you like, and it's just when it's young people and adults get together to identify local community-based challenges, and they think about a project that they would like to create to address those, to transform it in the real world, so it is transformative, um, and then they address these challenges. The activities in co-creation labs are based on participatory design techniques and has a chance to input to make sure that it is truly collective and collaborative and it fosters that idea that we're not individuals working on our own in society but we are all a part of it together. That's just a, an infographic of how a, how a co-creation lab might look. And so SEI, what it is and what it is, and Maria Bell said that we practice enterprise education in a more innovative, modern, changing, and that is exactly what social innovation education is all about. So you could call it a little bit like social, in educa social enterprise education or social innovation education. So it is student driven. Students have ownership and autonomy over their projects. We're not telling students what to do. We're facilitating them to do the best that they can. We work alongside the community rather than doing things for them without their involvement, without their consultation. Rather than just one person deciding on it and doing it with other people watching on. We try to foster, engender, and develop a mindset in young people involved in the project so that they can become an, an agent for change now and in the future. So they take that into whatever they may go into, whether that's career-wise or whether that's just in their free time, but they take that with them into the future. Um, and it isn't being unaware of societal issues. So all of our social innovation projects are linked to and driven by the sustainable development goals to try and tackle these sustainable challenges that we're seeing so much of at the moment. Um, we have redefined children-adult relationships. So it's not didactic learning. It's not teachers telling children what to do. It's totally collaborative. And over time, uh, young people develop social innovation competencies, which we researched and identified through the project um, to create their own social philosophy that they actually not. I'm not sure what it's like in other countries, but in the UK, it can often be just ticking a, a box to say we've done this. That is not what this is about. So we have lots of projects all over Europe. Um, because the Horizon project took place in seven countries in Europe and we actually now are scaling it in a new Erasmus project in four more countries. In the UK, in the UK, uh, for example, to become a, um, a base for social, emotional, mental health. And I won't read through all of these because of the time, but in Spain, for example, they uh, totally decorated and redid their playground and their school area because it was very grey and they wanted it to be a more inclusive, playful area that could support young people's well-being. Um, this is a summary of the benefits that we identified in the evaluation report with young people feeling valued, a sense of belonging with their school community and their local community, feeling empowered because we listened and we heard and we acted on that or any of the stakeholders involved and uh, feeling that they were proactive, that they had agency in actually not only 
actually put that into practice. And this is one of the innovations that is the basis for the SPEED project, which uh, I'll hand back over to Maria Bell and she's going to talk to you about that. Thank you. I think I have about two minutes, so I'll be very Sorry. quick. That's okay, <laughs> yeah. Um, so basically, taking, taking into account all of those amazing concepts and how social innovation education wants to basically make a society more fair and fairer through transformative and social give something else um, that will take all those change agents, all those students that have that will be becoming change agents and then give them um, tools and, and a mindset and knowledge and capabilities to create then social enterprises with that. Mm -hmm. uh, so that's why it has a little bit of a, of a business focus, but not business as usual. It's, it's within the social and solidarity um, economy concepts of, of creating a Add to that uh, the new concepts and the new vision that Social Enterprise International has created, which is called uh, shared wealth, and it and it is, it 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 basically um, it defines wealth not just with money but anything that the that the social enterprise wants to call it wealth and how that wealth should be shared fairly through through everyone that actually contributes to that to that creation of wealth and also the the decision making part of it, which is also has to be. Um, Again, very uh, participatory and collaborative, and everyone has to be involved in it, etc. And um, so, an another factor there as well is that students are able to um, use uh, Locosoco eco-friendly products. So, Locosoco it's a it's a company, and it's, it's a vision in which they work that they only hand work with uh, eco-friendly, sustainable products, uh, and then create community-based social enterprises uh, and in all the, in this part of um, um, of just creating these projects um, this, is, this is a picture of the ex school in Exdale in, in England uh, where they are again learning about how to create a social enterprise selling these products these eco-friendly products and then as well usually having a um, environmental and a side environmental project that they will then um, uh, focused on the environment as well. <laughs> then the idea is for these um, for this project to then be replicated into other countries, such as Croatia, Croatia, Germany, and Greece, which is part of the speed project. And we do have to say, which is um, I'm sure is the case for many projects here, but COVID has had an impact. Uh, with with this project as well, and uh, well, now that this academic year is starting again, they're gonna um, basically start again, and, and, and should be fine. Uh, very quickly, one of the impacts of the that this seed project has had is basically um, a bit more of what Jen already said within the social innovation education. It has an impact on people because students feel empowered and they you know they want to make a difference. Um, it has an impact on on the on the mindset of how such a social enterprise business mindset works. So students that are not really part of it are also being interested in want to learn about how, how to run a, a, a business. Um, again, a social enterprise. They, their parents, their community are thinking a lot more into um, using eco-friendly products and thinking of the environment and thinking on the impact that we have on the environment normally. And this one in particular has had an impact as well on academia because it has um, driven uh, the more research research uh, projects and, and, and studies that will be as well happening within the school. Um, so Social Enterprise International is proud to be affected change through the um, to the social solidarity economy. We can we can answer any questions that people may have after this. These are our emails. Um, we'll put a little QR, QR code. <laughs> might be easier to scan. And that's it. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. And also just to mention that we we will share the, the PowerPoint so everyone can have access to the information and so on. But uh, what I got excited about was that everyone in the room, you know, now in the virtual room was uh, kind of uh, really 
saying, you know, um, empathizing with the with this example, and they saw that the work, you know, that before presented the case in university, and that dots are connected. That, by the way, is uh, next, our next speaker uh, from C dot. But um, what also was me is um, um, the the co-creative, the, the, the co-creation approach, and how. Is not only about um, activation of views, but also the the, the the one concept that I was referring to before. So creating really capabilities for citizens, future citizens, to actively in the society. So is uh, the economy that uh, so economic business that is then serving the gom the common. Thanks so much for sharing this uh, this um, present uh, this uh, yeah program and also I hope that you will be in contact then uh, with the, the uh, and uh, and we move now to um, our next speaker and panelist uh, um, Sun Kyung Han I hope I am pronouncing well uh, founder of the CEO and CEO of C dot so connecting the dots. In the Republic of Korea, and also she will speak with her colleague uh, Julie, who is impact manager in the same organization. And uh, the idea of transition campus for a sustainable future, offering a new learning approach to social innovation. So please. The oh, thank you so much, uh, Valentina. So I will speak now. Uh, the only thing there is an echo. Yes, we figure out now. Is it okay, everyone with Perfect. me? Okay. Hello, everyone. Um, good evening here, and probably the good morning and good afternoon somewhere else. I'm honored to uh, present today with the great speakers and also wonderful moderator. And I'm Sang Kyung Han of the C Dot. Uh, today, I'm going to talk with uh, my colleague Julie. Julie. Hi, I'm Julie, and I'm working as an impact manager, as I introduced, and I'm so glad to meet you all today. So we are going to uh, talk about our new project, Future Transition Campus, today, which we carry out the research efforts and design it and test it with other partners. And um, before we go into the detail, uh, we want to talk a little bit about ourselves. So as the Valentina uh, introduced uh, us as a connecting dots, uh, we have been working for eight years to catalyze social innovation in Asia, including Korea, by connecting social innovation, uh, connection and knowledge. And um, recently, we set our direction more clearly for the um, uh, systemic change. So our platform we create for the connection and exchange and learning is a shifted their direction for the more the systemic change. The uh, project we are going to talk today. So the, um, this is Arenda today, and the Future Transition Campus is a new learning approach for transition towards a sustainable future. I uh, repeatedly mentioned the three words, the future transition campus. It's actually the telling all the stories I'm talking to you today. Talk a little bit about the background and also the context, why we, our team thinking about the why future ca transition campus is needed at this moment. Um, the human being and we all have been suffering from the many social problems such as poverty and climate crisis and also uh, power inequality and etc., which the market economy uh, was caused, I think. And But uh, last year, especially, we, everyone here living in the world under COVID-19 crisis, we haven't never had in the before. This crisis forced us to reflect the um, ourself, uh, human being, and also um, other people and also nature and technology. And also we had to reflect about the system we are living in. And under this circumstance, we also witness social inequality is more uh, worsen and worsen. And also we uh, realized that the vulnerability of the global cooperation structure as well. And we found 
have the qualified system for coexistence. And sometimes due to the lack of the global citizenship, the situation uh, becomes more serious and worse. But under COVID-19, um, nevertheless, uh, we also find out, uh, especially uh, last year from the uh, Giuseppe Forum, the social uh, solidarity now expected to play a much larger role in COVID-19 response in terms of rebalancing efficiency and resilience uh, throughout the economy. So our team, our partner, uh, strongly agree with that it is a very critical time that social economy and social solidarity economy organization need to develop their capability to innovate towards a more ecological civilization for the sustainable life. So this campus um, is aiming at the developing the thriving society for everyone under this long-term emergency era. To make that happen, we offer the core capability for the transition to the people uh, working in the different sectors, including the citizen sector as well. And here, and we uh, carried out the research about the current social innovation and also economy education program and also research and development in Korea and outside. According to or the based on our research, we uh, define three core uh, capability for the future. The first one, as you can see in the slide, system thinking. And second one is a future literacy. And third one, so the we can diagnose the problem through the system thinking. And also we can use our uh, social imagination capability uh, for the future. And also we can draw, uh, we can also uh, write the new narrative and story with our community and teams. So as you can see in this slide, the three emerging practice can bring the change on relationship and perspective and knowledge creation. For the relationship, actually, the people can understand the complex interdependency on the relationship between people and us, etc. And also for the perspective, we can have a more long-term perspective for the future. And third one is about the uh, knowledge creation. In the past, the, only the experts or academics create the knowledge for everyone. But through this new way of that the knowledge uh, creation, we can work with the other uh, citizen to create a new story and based on that, we can create a new information knowledge and it can lead to that the new actions for the future. So we did this uh, three emerging practices. We designed a six week fellowship program with a new uh, learning approach and our partner, uh, Happy Bridge Mondragon and also our research wonderful partner, Dr. Metal Labs have been working together. So for the um, details, my colleague Julie will continue from now on. Julie, would you like to start? I'm, I really appreciate the kind introduction and I will continue to present. Uh, Upon the results of the first stage of the empirical research, we've done the pilot test with the theme of imagination of a 2050 South City, um, considering climate crisis. And we've invited the local activists and university students and social innovators who have five to seven years experience. Um, because we wanted to create the collaboration and promote community-based networking with the social purpose. Specifically, we would try to collectively investigate food life, health life, working life, and caring life. And we've done this experiment for six weeks, as Sung Young told, and offering the guide of system thinking and analysis and how to build up the future scenario together and the opportunity to draw the storytelling with team members. Teamwork and horizontal collaboration are very important factors in learning and doing experiments or projects and co-produce the outcomes in it. Um, um, these pictures show what we've done during the program, including social networking and interactions using a lot of activities. And this is the outcome kind of participant. Actually, we call them fellow. Um, after the program, they are saying, learn the importance of teamwork 
and new leadership. And it was a safe and comfortable place for networking with the people in different fields as we share the same purpose for the society and enjoy the learning, the new approach to problem solving and so, and so on. And these are Throughout the pilot test, we verify the high visibility and effectiveness of the campus program. But still, probably there are some points that should be developed further. So next step, um, now we are setting up on another experiment in Ulsan. Ulsan is the local city and famous for heavy industry. But now the economy has gone into the decline. So they are focusing on social innovation and social and solidarity economy to re revitalize the economy there. Accordingly, we will take a deeper look into the importance and effectiveness for social business planning and solutions by attempting the continuous experiment. Yeah. Thank you very much, um, Son Kyun and Julie, for sharing this experience and imagining more sustainable future for with students. Uh, one thing for me is an element of reflection is that uh, you know piloting and experimenting is so important especially in social innovation many times we piloting and experimenting something we are not so used so to have this kind of mindset to also be open for failure and uh, testing and uh, this is uh, really proving to be, you know, rewarding in the, uh, the long run. And also the, the fact to really work in partnership with many actors, including, you know, all the actors you mentioned uh, from government, to private sector, civil society organization. So uh, thank you again for sharing. We now move, I think, to our last but not least uh, panelists, because I think that uh, um, our uh, last, uh, the other panelists, problems so she couldn't join us but we will be happy to share a presentation afterwards so that uh, also everyone can have the contact uh, um, in the case of uh, uh, Miss Roman uh, who was supposed to speak about uh, a case uh, in Morocco but uh, to uh, Miss Sofia Munoz Fernandez uh, who is a sociologist working in education projects at Reddit ethical and social finance. So a different perspective and angle there in Spain. And Mr. Fernandez will speak about the ethical finance education as a tool for transformative economies for a green and inclusive future. The floor is yours, Sofia. Thank you very much. Okay, thank you very much for the opportunity to share our proposal of the network called REDEFES, which is a network on education and ethical and solidarity finance. Um, I, my name is Sofia, I Solidarity, which is an organization that promotes ethical finance in Catalonia, in Spain. And it's one of the organizations that promoted this network alongside with Finanzas Aratago, Oico Credit Catalunya and Fundación Finanzas Éticas. Um, to put in place, uh, we believe that we are in a, no, and as our colleagues said, no, after the COVID, we are in a serious ecological crisis and the global inequality. Levels of poverty and social exclusion, which are especially among women in the global south, no? And alongside with this, we have an, an economic education in the formal schools that won't, uh, which hide the impacts on people and in the planet uh, of the current economic uh, system and the financial system, leaving aside other economic uh, perspectives and approaches such as the feminist economic approach or the ecological, and as well the alternatives such as like SSE or ethic finance. Um, besides, I, we, no. besides uh, we have right now diverse uh, organizations on ethical and solidarity finance that show that another economy is possible. Therefore, we believe another model of economic education is also possible and urgent. <laughs> Excuse me, I have to.
2018, we started the Network of Education on Ethical and Solidarity Finance, REDEFES, which brings together people, mainly teachers, um, but also organizations and platforms that promote critical economical ed education on ethical finance as a promoter for an economy that places uh, in the center people and planet. Uh, no, that economy that doesn't only think about the uh, economic benefit, positive impact. Um, and how we work this, we work this from a transformative education approach, that, which means that we try to contribute to demystify from the theory and the practice preconceived concepts of the economy. So basically the idea is to uh, bring the tools that allow young people to go from a critical approach on banks and the financial system and the the alternatives that exist, like the ethical finance, um, but at the same time promoting a local action, promoting an, uh, a social a participation no? uh, with the change of their behaviors and attitudes that can be with a responsible consumption of their money, of their savings and their investments, but not only, also thinking of the uh, a local action as a social participation in your community, right? Um, Okay, so then in 2018, this is a little bit the history of the network, uh, with, the organi with some organizations, we had some experience working with teachers and students, and in 2018, we decided to do a workshop uh, where teachers and organizations, ethic finance and uh, transformative education organizations, uh, worked uh, on the necessities of the teachers and the schools to be able to introduce, introduce ethical finance and transformative economies. And the main uh, necessities that arise in these workshops were the necessity of access to resources, pedagogical resources, methodologies, experiences, and contact with the people who are working in this. This is why we, we this was like the beginning of the network, of the, no, the network Redefes. And then in 2019, alongside with the World Social Forum, the theme on transformative economies and organizations on ethic finance and transformative education, but on a global scale. And we worked on the objectives and the goals that the network RedFS should have. So in this sense, like the main goal was to facilitate a space that puts together pedagogical and methodological resources, which incorporate the analysis of social, economic, and environmental impacts of the financial system, but as well alternatives, no? the, uh, the transformative education on ethical and solidarity finance. In this sense, in the end, no, at the end of 2019, we published the website of the RedFS which I must, I'm sorry because it's in Spanish, it's an image, so I couldn't translate, but it's only explaining the, um, the different sections of the website. We have on one side uh, the resources, a space for research, searching the resources, um, where there's resource, uh, pedagogical resources addressed to any target group, like it can go from secondary school to university, formal school and non-formal school. Um, there's also a section for debate, a section for news about <laughs> education and ethic finance, and then a section that I will explain a little bit now, it's called experiences, um, which are practices, pedagogical practices, with schools and professors and students. So in that sense, it, in, it gives a deeper insight of what is ethic finance and economic transformative economies. Um, here there's like an example, very for examples um, of some a methodology we're using called service learning that uh, it's about working for a, at least a trimester for and the idea is that a social organization of the community goes to the classroom and shares their expertise and then the students will give you back a project right in our in our case no we are we promote ethic finance so we teach what is ethic finance we go with them to see different organizations financed by the ethic finance uh, and then usually they do some project on sense 
Um, and now I'm finishing now, um, just to say that in the 2020, we had the World Social Forum on Transformative Economies, which had to be online, of course. And in that, uh, in that moment, we, we organized a workshop called Thinking on Economic Education Model and the Proposals which was an, a chance to share with uh, no to share the uh, different resources to work ethical finance in a formal and non-formal education and as well as a chance to share experiences educative experiences and then later on in the 2021 in this january january we had a mapping uh, of experiences this type of experiences but in a global scale and the latest thing we've been working on uh, uh, to uh, to promote uh, economic edu in a, uh, education in a critical, pluralistic, and ethical way. Since right now in Spain, we are they are trying to change the uh, education planning on finance for the all the all the formal education, which is promoted with alongside uh, conventional banking, or uh, only exclusively. That's why we believe it's not uh, critical. It's not pluralistic. signatures uh, for this campaign and this is all I try to be very fast I hope I manage yeah you manage very well I have to say this panel was the most disciplined uh, that I've <laughs> ever been in so I'm and um, yeah I believe that uh, I would like really to um, to have a look to the mapping uh, that you at the global level that you were mentioning so if you can share afterwards uh, I would be really happy to have a look to it but uh, what I, I really found interesting also is that the the kind of top down bottom they work in the sense of um, importance of advocacy influencing um, uh, policy make, making it is from uh, promoting formal and informal education as a tool for transformation. So I found quite interesting this, uh, this approach you, you are proposing. And um, since uh, we are uh, now um, at the end of our you know, first part of presentation and we have a bit of time still, um, I really would like you know, to, to ask a question more personal uh, to, all, uh, to all of you. Mm, that is related to why you chose to work in the sector, you, the organization, and uh, also, you know, in the experiences that you were sharing, in your opinion, what are the elements that uh, can that really can summarize somehow how to boost social innovation and be repeat, replicable? Because this is also one of the challenges that um, certain, since it's so community-based and local and, uh, you know, with clear identity, uh, how to replicate it. And I'm not speaking about scaling up, I think, uh, you know, for, for this exact reason. So, um, uh, Davorka, if you want to start with your thoughts, uh, I'm sorry. Uh, then we can, uh, you know, just a couple of minutes, one minute, just your insights. Mm. Oh, wow, why I started to work on this. I'm involved in research on social enterprises and social entrepreneurship. So uh, for me, it was quite important to develop a course that I will, that is a bit broader. Uh, uh, encourage all those kind of uh, what we mentioned several times, creating a social agent and educating uh, and encouraging uh, students to become social agents for me. It's very important to uh, teach something not in a classical um, teacher students front uh, line uh, teaching, but uh, to to you know work together with them to to get them to encourage them to take a role in the, in that real life and to to, to um, feel the power to to change things on their own. So it, for me. <laughs> in in teaching them in, in other ways so for me that's that's the most important thing and how to boost social innovation and make the and make him make them uh, more uh, re replicable i don't know. 
huge um, tool that we have in hand and uh, we can do uh, and maybe maybe to encourage some sort of partnership with um, uh, uh, technology, uh, I don't know, um, accelerator hubs and so on to, uh, to um, teach students to maybe use the technology for social change, for, for addressing social needs, and then those changes through uh, audience and global beneficiaries include. Um, it's a very <laughs> rough topic. Thank you, thank you, Davorka, Davorka for the, your uh, thoughts. And uh, yeah, um, Ms. Kim, what's uh, what's your opinion on this one? Oh, uh, I wonder. Valentina's uh, 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 question. Uh, but I think that uh, social innovation uh, try, uh, fosters uh, from urgent needs of living people and organization. So uh, I'm a cooperative uh, researcher and also uh, experience to care my uh, daughters with uh, consumer cooperatives members. In, uh, so we got our consumer cooperatives uh, organized sustainable uh, consumption and <clears throat> uh, 2012, uh, I know Terms uh, of cooperatives uh, are enterprises with your soul at the site. So uh, after then, uh, I study and pursue uh, what's the um, cooperative nature to promote innovation um, collectively. Uh, that's my uh, research question. Uh, and I think that uh, cooperatives uh, was and uh, social innovations, uh, social uh, and in innovation, uh, psychological confidence in organization and uh, reciprocity is very important to promote social innovation. And about my uh, presentation, emphasize one thing. Uh, in COVID-19, uh, it's a huge social disaster. And in the disaster, social and economic equality is more expanding. And this is might be uh, true in SSE education uh, because while small business essential workers, a lot of vulnerable people lost their job is in financial difficulties. And in rural less have opportunities of lifelong education in universities. So uh, how these people can participate in learning of SSE, overcoming distance, lack of time and money. Uh, in this context, and supportable partnership and collaboration uh, between um, universities, government uh, intermediate like uh, uh, CDAT uh, organization, yeah, very fantastic uh, program <clears throat> uh, they chose uh, to me, uh, to us, and local community is very needed. So I think this is very important uh, to me and uh, in rural city, in South Korea. 
Yeah. So I'm sorry. No, <laughs> I'm not, uh, thank you. Thank impressed. you for this answer. And we now go to the UK with uh, Maria Bell and Jen. Yeah, okay. <laughs> Hi, thanks. Um, so first, I, I used to be a secondary school teacher and I decided to work in this field because what I was seeing in secondary school wasn't really representing where I thought education should be or enough um, education on sustainability and uh, critical thinking. So I wanted to get into enriching the UK education, which is good, but I wanted to enrich it um, from another perspective. And I'm, I'm doing that through social enterprise. <laughs> With the projects that we provide to schools. Um, for me, the, the key elements that can boost social innovation, um, and my perspective is, is always through education, because that's my field of expertise. Um, two things, really. One thing is that young people don't accept that they can't make a difference in, but they have hands-on practical experience so that they can see that they can be part of that and also, I've loved hearing about how it's happening. Like, I've loved hearing from all of you today about how it's happening on so many different levels and in so many different fields. And I think it's important that we make sure that that is joined up and connected so we're not all doing things without understanding how what, what we do in primary and secondary school, that's going to impact people when they're at university or when they're in the community or need to make sure that that is all connected so that we are joined up in our approach. That's my opinion anyway. I think I can just add my, my experience. Um, when I was in school, I had the opportunity to be part of an enterprise, educa enterprise, yeah, enterprise education project where we created um, a business and we just sold and it was basically business as usual um, and that I am in this industry or in this part of the economy which is again very has a different focus as a social and environmental focus very important if we can teach uh, or, or allow students to know that there is other types of, of just entering um, this other um the other way of thinking of solving issues, solving social or environmental issues, and then creating products or services that then can be sold as well, but but have a you know the purpose which we, they are doing it is much more important than the money that they create with it. So money that comes with it, something additional, but it's not the main focus. Um, I think that um, think that mentality of, of business is, is actually very very good and very different um, and at the same time they become and, and I think the new generations will already have that kind of ingrained that they already we can see how Greta Thunberg and, and all these new generations they're they're starting to be a lot more active and wanting to be part of, of the you know grown-up discussion allow them through education in in their classrooms and either formal or informal, as we had said, just give them that platform so that their voice can be heard um, and they can become and, and be the change agents that I think will already be in their blood. <laughs> um, all right, thank you. Let's go to CDOT, Republic of Korea, our colleagues. Uh, I will explain. Um, experience like I worked in the private sector, like a uh, mass production society, but I feel like you know, I was a kind of the government decided because, you know, I, I thought it never, the society never changed uh, if the, the government has uh, dominated um, to solving the, some problems. So I thought um, there is an opportunity to change the society in the first place, but when I just the work with in the CIRA. And then I just met the people who are actively work in the this sector, social, social and social economic sector to change the society. And then I saw the hope. 
uh, to change the society and especially for my kids. You know, the change it will take a long time. So even though we just said we need the urgent uh, transition, urgent in reality, it will take a long time to, you know, change the whole the society system structure things. But so if I cannot change the society now, but if we just try to change the society, then probably for the kids, there should be different. So that's why I'm just working in this sector. So I, I was a to produce a lot of the products as much as they want, as quick as they want. I mean, the society, but the society should be changed. Now, thinking about the human, humanity and the civilization and, and so on. This is the, what I just, you know, try to work on. Can I add a little bit? And um, I'm very happy to hear that the, um, one of my colleagues, Julie, shared how she decided to work in this sector. So, um, adding to her the story, actually, the uh, definitely, I had a lot of story why I engaged in the sector, but um, I also was very fascinated with the story of the innovators and street enterprise because they are not just uh, having a wonderful story itself, but kind of uh, um, heart they have for the society. And also, they also are very much humbled to share their vulnerability when they talk about the success successful story as well. So, uh, as since a connector and catalyst, I'm very much um, into that. The how we can uh, connect the stories and 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 through the story, how we can make it bigger. So uh, these days, uh, we are working toward a little bit more the systemic change. So we want to create and storytelling, and I'm sure that the story uh, each of us creating here and also. The story, the people we met through the work, uh, creates uh, can somehow influence on creating the a new narrative and also a bigger collective uh, story as well. So that's why I'm still <laughs> stay in this sector. So thank you. Thank you so much, Sophia. Please. Um, case I am I. Um, I've always been involved in transformation, um, but I do believe that right now the economic system and but mainly the financial system is core. No, it's very important and has a deep impact on all the social and environmental uh, negative impacts we see constantly. No, so I do believe that the transformation of that is. A big, big um, boost, no, for the social justice, uh, and also I believe that education is like a, it's not the most important, or I believe it's the more the deepest and long term way of transformation. That's why I, I, really and besides, also with you, I think you were asking as well about how to boost innovation and make it replicable. I didn't have time to say it in the presentation, sorry, but in the website, uh, what it, what tries to, to, to do is uh, help working in the educational field to be able to replicate uh, experiences or education activities that they can do in their own classroom or in the field they are working. Uh, I think that working alongside with teachers and the organizations who are involved in their daily work Um, to 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 do no to carry out their work is um, is a way of boosting this innovation. No? Her presentation, no, that uh, transformation is happens in the community. It's you know it's in, in that space. I uh, we hope Redefes is helping that community. <laughs> Well, thank you for this round uh, of answers. You know, I noted that in some of the key words you use. Among these is this passion, um, fill the gap, be inspired and inspire, and be a catalyst. Education is hands off. 
able to really ca uh, catch the attention and uh, activate um, uh, young uh, youngsters uh, to the use of technology partnerships and collective action to you know be able to really in um, boost the social innovation and uh, um, and uh, and also um, inclusion of vulnerable people becoming themselves, empowering themselves and being the one to be active um, uh, from their side. And then just one thing, because I believe uh, we are here today at GSEF Forum and uh, many of you mentioned connecting the dots, the importance of creation of platforms, sharing of information and so on. I believe that forum like this is, uh, you know, the main purpose uh, so thank you to Joseph uh, for 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 these efforts, and uh, I propose, if you are with me, just to conclude this, uh, you know, question of the forum, but uh, as a tweet. So very very short. Uh, I'm challenging you uh, until the end. The forum of the the question of the forum is, uh, uh, what should be the action or strategies? of individual government, governments, groups, societies to achieve a better and more inclusive world? What key actions should be promoted from the local level? Because uh, for us, so really a, a round uh, of table and then we can uh, perhaps conclude. So... Uh, oh, this, this question is really complex it's like for a for a very well, wide study <laughs> yeah uh, if i need to be uh if for me it's to do things together to to maybe promote that a collaboration of different kinds are the key because um these social and environmental challenges could not be solved by a single person by individual so be somehow um, promoted. Thank you so much, uh, Ms. Kim. Uh, you are muted. You should unmute. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> no, don't worry. Yes. <laughs> I want to say in my university and community situation, uh, aged society over the population. Uh, in the crisis of COVID-19, we are suffering in SSC education, study, interaction among participants. Remote learning take geographic constraint away among participants in the remote learning. I think Developing learning system or a kind of new learning method uh, is very kind for vulnerable people, including seniors in rural communities, very needed in our situation and uh, our next action. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you so much. So, uh, Maria Bell. Um, so, from from my educational perspective, I would say that the UK's system is very knowledge rich and to make it to make society uh, better and more inclusive, we would need a more broad and balanced skills rich curriculum. Uh, that's how to identify, tackle and address social issues through education. You know, to foster so um, as part of curricular. Mm -hmm. yeah. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Um, Julie. So my colleague Julie will answer about the question. I passed on her. <laughs> <laughs> um, I think uh, I think it is a very I can give it a very similar perspective, like a multidisciplinary collaboration is initially needed because Korea is a kind of the silos dominant the government structure. So probably this made us stop moving forward to a better world. Making process should be turned upside down, like kind of from the top down to the bottom up. 
So probably it would require the horizontal integration strategies, gathering essential knowledge on various fields in order to deal with the very complex and wicked social problems, I think. And of the future trends on campus, it's like in the process of drawing the future together and a common, common understanding and goal will be achieved all together. So collective action will occur. So we think that there is a need for the co-creation process uh, in each variety and do experiments together and produce outcomes together and manage it together. So togetherness is a very important keyword for us. So we are uh, getting yes. online. Uh, Sophia, please. Yes, um, yes, I have some things, and I would only like insist in um, promoting a critical and pluralistic and ethical education in economics, in formal and non-formal schools, but especially in formal schools. Mm. Yes, basically that. Right? So now what I will try to do after these will be to try to, you know, condense it in a tweet so that then um, uh, you can ask, you can post, uh, you know, a bit the concept uh, uh, that uh, came uh, in a very short manner uh, from this session, but I believe that co-creation, pluralistic economy, education is, uh, you know, a long life learning process and inclusive process. So uh, let's uh, try our best. But then uh, I really want to thank you all the speakers uh, today for sharing their, uh, their uh, experience and really best of luck uh, to inspire uh, and get inspired by others. And uh, thank you, you know, Leonor, and all the team of GSEF for the organization. So I leave this to you to, to manage you know, the conclusion and the picture. Okay, Leonor, could you give us like, I don't know, is three, two, one, or one, two, three? In Korea, it's like one, two, three. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> do you say like, in Korea, we say one, two, three. Ah, okay, good. No, no, we do that. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you very much, Leonor. Actually, she's supporting us from um, Portugal and Barcelona. I don't know. She's from Portugal, wow. but based in Barcelona. So great, like Thank support. You so Thank you so much. So like part of this uh, women dominant. Sorry, I don't like the word dominant. Um, women later <laughs> session. Driven, Thank driven, you so driven session. Driven. Women great, driven. Valentina. Women you're you're your best. So like we all like other leaders, pioneers. Thank you so much. I I really hope that you don't feel up. Please don't be like my friends are watching on YouTube. It is directly shared still on gsep2021.org website. So the idea is that we'll also record the session and share our GSEF uh, YouTube channel and on our website. So the idea is to disseminate and share people beyond today. Okay. Thank you so much. This is time when we time and place where we can see each other get along and all together we can make things happen thank you so much and stay connected we should great day stay tuned thank you so much bye bye thank bye 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 thank you thank you, thank you very much everyone thank it was a really good day thank you thank, thank you for your contribution bye bye bye